about an hour ago, Israel launched some very intense airstrikes on two different sites uh, for Hamas, actually, inside Gaza. One of them was in the west uh, side of Gaza City itself. The other is in Khan Yunis in the other in the southern areas of the Gaza Strip, Israel, uh, actually, Israeli army issued a statement saying that these were Hamas posts and, of course, that Hamas bears responsibility for whatever happens uh, from the Gazan enclave. I think this basically holds two significant messages, one uh, directed at the Hamas movement and the other factions in Gaza, which is basically that nothing will change in terms of how Israeli army deals with Gaza and with the resistance factions here in Gaza. We've heard that a uh, very particular statement, Hamas bears responsibility during the 12-year uh, reign of Benjamin Netanyahu, and now with a new coalition government, Neftali Bennett is obviously trying to deliver the same message to the Palestinian factions here, that they will continue to treat Hamas and factions in Gaza the same way, basically, in terms of retaliation, in terms of uh, destroying the military capabilities of Hamas and other factions here in Gaza. I think also so the other message that uh, these airstrikes uh, held uh, were for the Israeli communities themselves, the Israeli voters who actually elected uh, Neftali Bennett and his uh, uh, new partner, Yair uh, Lapid, I think they're trying to convey a message to the Israeli community, especially in the southern areas of Israel, that they are capable of protecting the Israeli settlements and nothing will change in terms of trying at least to stop the rockets from Gaza. Uh, obviously, Egypt has been trying to play a key role in uh, preventing uh, further escalation. They're trying to impose order. They're trying to ensure that the ceasefire agreement holds. I think the Israeli government, Neftali Bennett's government, are trying to show to the world and to the Israelis themselves that they are not as fragile as the ceasefire agreement they conducted with Hamas and other factions in Gaza. No injuries, by the way, had been reported. I think the two military sites had been uh, evaluated evacuated already before uh, Israel struck them. So obviously there is an understanding here. Uh, there is an anticipation, let me say, from the Hamas and other factions in Gaza that, that retaliation is going to happen uh, in response, of course, to the incendiary balloons. However, Gaza continue uh, to say that uh, Jerusalem will always remain a red uh, line that cannot be crossed, and the aggression in Jerusalem and the Palestinians there in Al-Aqsa Mosque cannot be tolerated, and they will uh, do whatever it takes. They are prepared to deal with all scenarios, and by the way, that's exactly also what the Israeli army statement said today, that they are yes. prepared to deal with every scenario coming from Gaza, even if it means returning to the same uh, round, uh, to the same uh, situation as, as it was in May 11, and by that they, of course, mean uh, the round of conflict. Of course, the hostilities uh, may continue or may not continue. I do not, personally, I do not think that it's very likely. I think uh, it's just a message, as we said, to the Israeli side as well as Hamas. I think Egypt and maybe even some other parties like Qatar, the United Nations, may interfere tomorrow morning uh, or today morning and uh, try to put some pressure on the Israeli government as well as the factions here in Gaza and Hamas to uh, ensure that the ceasefire agreement holds, especially that both parties are in a fragile state. They cannot tolerate or bear uh, another round of conflict. Gaza is still trying to heal or to recover uh, from the aftermath of the lost uh, war. Well, obviously, uh, Palestinians are convinced that the Israeli settlers, the far-right uh, groups in Israel, were trying to provoke the Palestinians in Jerusalem. They're trying to convey a message that Jerusalem will always be the eternal capital of Israel. And this, this is obviously the opposite of, Pal of what Palestinians are convinced and are seeing and were, uh, what they are saying. Uh, this is basically the trigger for all conflict. This is the core of the uh, Palestinian Palestinian issue of the core of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, to be accurate. Uh, I think uh, this is what needs to be dealt with, and perhaps that's the reason the international community and mediators like Egypt, for example, uh, had been uh, uh, had been trying uh, to find a further solution to the entire conflict. It's not just about uh, some escalation, military escalation between Gaza and Israel. They need to deal uh, with the main 
issue here, which is Jerusalem. I think as long as uh, the Israeli far-right groups continue to provoke Palestinians, then calm will not be restored, and that's possibly what Egypt is trying to do. Now, we've heard from our sources that they have, there have been, uh, they have been holding intensive talks with even Bennett, Naftali Bennett, recently uh, over last night uh, to make sure that the Israeli police uh, does not allow the settlers to enter, for example, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And I think it works. I think that's what happened. Uh, we know that they changed its course. They changed the uh, path, the route of the uh, march itself, the parade itself. Uh, there has been some significant uh, changes there in their plan. And I think also opening the roads directly after the parade ended uh, and saying that they will uh, retaliate the incendiary balloons and the night confusion activities that are happening from Gaza in a different time okay. and with a different nature of response, I think that says a message that Israel is not really interested in escalating the situation here, mm -hmm. as well as the factions here in Gaza, because, for example, we haven't seen any rockets being launched. Uh, the only thing we have seen is that people in Gaza took to the street and they started to protest again along the, alongside the border fence, I think this is just the beginning. It's, it means that they're trying to give some time for the Egyptian mediator and the United Nations even to interfere to make sure that they, both parties, return to the ceasefire square, if we, if we may say.